we're ready to get started. So warm welcome to you all and welcome to this webinar. Um, today we're going to reveal something really exciting to you all. Uh, we're going to show our new AI module and how this can maximize efficiency in your community engagement plans. And um, we're also going to talk about how to make your engagement more inclusive. So that is really going to be the twofold focus uh, of this webinar. And starting with a brief introduction of who we have here today with us. So first of all, my name is Wietse, uh, Wietse van Ansbeek. My, I'm uh, calling in from Belgium, Brussels, and I'm the CEO and the co-founder of Citizen Lab. And then we have um, straight from Toulouse, our Basque American colleague, Irene Pedruello, um, who is our head of product, as well as Marlene Fuchs, I hope I pronounced it correctly, who is a participation manager at the city of Vienna. So really an honor also, Marlene, to have you, and she's going to uh, share her practical experiences working with the AI. Irene is going to take us through the AI and uh, demo it. So before we get started, just in terms of housekeeping, um, feel free to drop your questions in the Q&A. We would love to answer them at the end of the webinar. And to get started, so today we're going to talk about AI and about efficiency. And so we have two questions for you um, to set the scene and actually to understand how you process your uh, community inputs today. So there will be a first question popping up right now for you in the, in, in the poll. So the question goes as following. How do you currently analyze your community input? So we've got four different choices. Um, we'll just take a minute for you to answer that question. But it's pretty clear where we're heading with this one. We'll give it another 10 seconds. I see there's about like 60% of us who have filled it out already, who have answered this. So everyone arriving, uh, welcome, first of all, to the webinar. So really excited to have you here. We're going to, um, just to reintroduce, we have Irene here and Marlene. We're going to, Irene is going to share more about the AI module for efficient community engagement. And Marlene is going to uh, share a little more about the experiences from the city of Vienna. And feel free to answer the poll that is currently um, open. All right, we, I think this is a very clear um, answer. Like, how are we today processing input? Well, there's 13% who says, well, we're not currently analyzing the data. And there's a clear 77%. So three out of four were actually saying we relied on spreadsheets for the data analysis. Kind of, I would say the answer that we could expect, 6% says we're using advanced statistic programs and there's another 3% um, who says that they are outsourcing the data analysis to consultants and agencies. So thanks so much. It's really insightful to, um, to start from there. And then we have a second question. So let me first also share the results with you all. And then we have a second question, which is going to pop up in a moment. Oops. There we go. So um, a question that we have for you, what is the benefit that you're most excited about when you think about uh, the AI-powered data analysis? So again, four different choices that you have, increased efficiency, automated reporting, closing the loop with your residents, and uncovering deeper insights. So we'll give it another um, minute for you to answer the poll. Oh, the poll is not popping up, I see. So uh, let's see if we can get it started. No, it seems like we're not. I do get a message a poll has been launched in the meeting, but we're going to just um, carry on. So um, before I pass on the word to Irene, who is Citizen Lab for the ones who are not familiar with us, well, from, uh, Citizen Lab, we're a team of about 50 people. We are a B Corp social enterprise 
working on the mission of better community engagement. And we have been doing that today with over 500 uh, local governments around the world. You see a couple of logos on here. Um, some of the partners that we're really proud of, of working with, such as City of Vienna, but also Ghent, Seattle, really good diversity also across the world. And our mission at Citizen Lab is to help governments build stronger cultures of participation and cultures of engagement. And we provide the tools to do that. And we do that with tools across different methods. We follow the, the participation spectrum and offer different uh, engagement tools across the spectrum. We help you integrate all the data and the community inputs into one single hub and platform. And then lastly, we also embed best practices in the tools that we provide um, so that you can, uh, yeah, come to the best possible participation projects. I do want to highlight that, especially at second part is going to be important for today um, because the whole part of data aggregation and, and data centralization is really key to reporting as well. So that's for sure something we're going to uh, touch on. And then lastly, if you want to know more about us, um, just go to this link here at the bottom, the impact uh, URL to know more about, uh, you know, the, the different or the work that we do. Um, what Irene is going to present today, I also want to highlight that it's been co-created with the city that we work with. On average, we have about more than a thousand public servants using the platform on an annual basis. And uh, so that is also very much how we develop the functionalities in collaboration with the different local governments. That being said, I'm going to uh, pass it on from here to Irene, who's going to tell us a little more about uh, the two different topics for today, inclusion and AI. Hi, everyone. I'm glad to be here. So I think um, it's worth interrogating a little bit how we got to identify an inclusion and AI as kind of rich territories. And as uh, Witze was alluding to, every month our teams, and that includes Gov success teams and uh, product and developers, have over 200 conversations with practitioners around the world. And by conversation, sometimes we mean interviews we have, workshops we invite them into to co-create, co-design, uh, surveys we run. And throughout all those conversations, I think there's two main challenges that have emerged as present, pervasive across countries. The first one has to do with inclusivity. How might I be able to make my, my consultation inclusive? How do I make sure that no voice is left behind? And I think some of you are definitely trying, right? Like you tell us, hey, I'm running consultations in the street, but I do need a way to make it more scalable. Or I spent the last two weeks transcribing all ideas that I collected offline, often in paper. How, how can you help me really make sure that uh, I bring them into the platform? We'll talk about that in a second. And the second challenge has to do with the next step, which is you have the input, you've collected it, you've brought it online as well, right? Like you've run a hybrid consultation, but you have so much of it that it's quite overwhelming. Um, some of you tell us, I know there's value, right? I know there's gold on those insights. I know I can really understand my community, uh, but I wish I were spending less time really digging. Uh, let's do the math together, actually, of, of what this sometimes means for all of you. And I think this is a bit of an optimistic, uh, underestimated math, math, math exercise. But let's imagine we have a consultation. Let's say it's a survey. And let's say that you've been kind of brave enough to put in two open-ended uh, questions, knowing that, oh gosh, this might mean a lot of my time, but I really want to understand my community. Let's assume you get a hundred responses, right? That's, pro that's way below average, the number of responses our cities usually get in their surveys. And let's say that you think you have bandwidth to devote 30 seconds to each of those responses to skimming them, getting a sense of it. Like that quickly puts you an, at an hour and 40 minutes of your time just to go over them, just to get a sense and I don't think it even includes necessarily slicing anything, categorizing it, identifying trends, and, and putting a report together. So we've built two solutions. And consider this webinar a bit of a first installment, right? A, an initiation in the path to really tackling those two challenges of inclusion and uh, efficiency. The first solution that we are going to be demoing today, we are calling it FormSync. And what it does is really lets you run hybrid consultations at scale. We are, it's a OCR, optical character, character recognition enabled technology that really lets you scan paper forms at scale, recognize data that you captured offline, offline and bring it online. And the second tool we are calling AI SenseMaking, and it's an AI powered, but most importantly, human moderated analysis and sense-making tool. 
And what we are trying to do there is support you at really processing and making sense of vast amounts of textual data. We want you to be efficient, we want you to be insightful, but we also want you to be timely, right? At reporting back either to your stakeholders or to residents. We are really talking about a whole journey. We know that if we only supported you at aggregating inclusive or input in an inclusive way, meaning bringing offline, online input together, that would not be enough, right? Like that's not enough to help you do your job. Like we know we have to help you organize, clean up the data, make sense of the data and close the loop either with your stakeholders or with your residents. So let's get to actually see how this works in action. I'm gonna go to a platform, I should say a hypothetical platform of the, of the city of San Sebastian, um, which I said I was Basque. I always try to bring uh, you know my cities to life here. And as you can see, the city is quite active, right? It's running quite a few consultations, asking input from the residents. And it's particularly interested in the question of, um, you know, how might we reimagine, co-design this beloved park that we all love? Uh, let's call it Central Park. This is a park that people know intimately. This is the park that they go to, you know, and spend their weekends on. Imagine those Sunday picnics, you know, or pickleball or tennis, or this is the park where they do that. If you are the project manager, you quickly realize, oh gosh, where have I put myself? I'm starting to get so many inputs, right? And um, that you start to see really quickly scheming that there's overlapping themes, that there might be some touchy subjects, maybe like dogs, should we have a dog park or park or not? But you are start, starting to sense that processing this is gonna be somewhat challenging. Let's see what you would do. The first step for you would probably to ask, ask yourself, is this all the input I've got or do I have any other input? In most cases, our clients have started to collaborate with community organizations. You know, In some cases, your own uh, personnel goes and knocks on doors or like sets up a little stand in the streets. And it might be that you have actually collected offline input. It could be that a community organization sent you a PDF perhaps with a few ideas that they've collected. It could be many, but in this case, we are just gonna demo a couple. And it might be that those ideas are in paper, that it's a PDF you've scanned and that you just simply wanna bring it online, but you wanna do it in a scalable way. You don't wanna have someone typing in, here's the idea, right? Here's the response. So we are using now FormSync, which is, as I was saying before, a tool that via optical character recognition really allows us to bring uh, paper forms into the system at scale. Let me walk you through the interface bit first. To the left, we have the inputs. In the middle, we have an initial scan of those inputs. And to the right, and most importantly, we have the original scan. This interface is designed to basically give you control, right, over what you are bringing into the system. No input is published yet. What you actually get to see is the paper first and really confirm it. So let's see what Norman said. We have someone called Norman that gave us our email, rightly identified and who's really advocating for a modern children's playground. We don't know exactly what he means, but we can definitely look at the copy. I mentioned before that this um, feature is in beta. As you can see, we might have to do a little bit of reordering of the text here, but that's all right, still accurate. The current playground, he says, Norman says, has been there since 1982. It's goring and dangerous. Uh, and it sounds like if we go to the, to the next question, Norman is excited and willing to also support, you know, with implementation of this plan, perhaps helping fundraise a little bit more to support it even further. We have another input too. We could have many more, right? Like we could have hundreds and hundreds of them. Let's imagine we are ready now to finally like bring this data online. We've been able to review it. I will simply go ahead and approve it and you'll see that it disappears from, from this dashboard. If everything goes all right, I am going back to our input manager. I should, if I refresh it, see Norman's input now here imported. As you can see, we added a little label so you know it's an offline input. Great, we are ready to go. We have all our input, right? Like it's a hybrid process. Everyone is represented. All voices are in our system. What would we do next? In normal circumstances, usually you, as I saw in the poll, you would probably export the data and go to the Excel sheet and start doing your work. Or maybe some of you might go via individual inputs and try to get a general sense. I'm here today to show you a, a, new, a new approach to this data analysis process, right? 
Let me show you a little bit more how the interface works, because at first there's a lot in here. This is our AI sense making interface. It allows you to go through every single input with confidence, right? You can see who submitted it, what's their title, what is the idea that they submitted. But first, what you usually do is actually wonder how you might want to structure the data. As an analyst, as a project manager, you start to first clean it up. As you can see, I've already prepared it a little bit for you, but I'm going to walk you through the steps that I would take if I were the project manager for this project. We have a pretty robust tagging system and you know a set of tagging methodologies that go from the most automated to the most manual. We are able to detect themes automatically. So if we, I already selected this automated tagging to show it to you. Um, and basically what it does is that it goes through it goes through all the inputs and attaches a tag to them. But we can also do a little bit more of a manual approach, which would entail me creating the tags, me creating the categories, because it might be a very specific uh, consultation that I'm running and I'm, I'm the one who know best. We want to put the human here at the center. So it might be that I create the tags, but then the system or the computer automatically assigns them to the inputs. It might be especially that if it fits a touchy subject that I want to run a sentiment analysis over the inputs to really identify what are those negative inputs or inputs that perhaps contain some negative sentiment that I should really be aware of and perhaps report back on. Let's have the sentiment analysis running on the background. You'll see it now pop on the left and start to go through all the inputs while I show you a bit more. The next step after I kind of structure my data would usually be trying to start making sense of it. We have built an auto summarization feature that will let you basically quickly get a sense of like, what, what do all these inputs say, like generally, right? Before you can dive into it. I already prepared an initial summary for you. Um, and we can see that it's pretty detailed, right? That it, what it does is like, it gives me a summary, puts the human on, on the loop and really gives me tra transparency over what are the inputs and as you can see me clicking here, those conversation bubbles, what are the inputs that have informed this summary? What And what does the summary say? Uh, we can see that many respondents have suggested ideas for enhancing the park's recreational facilities. These include Olympic-sized running tracks, permanent ping pong table, a concert stage. We also see that there's some ideas and some thoughts around nature and sustainability, perhaps a Japanese garden, a local bee farm, and on and on. Um, what I would recommend next and what you probably already do is like try to dive, dive, dive a little bit, uh, go a bit deeper on the data. I think one of the questions perhaps that would come to mind is like, I don't know, can we dive a bit deeper into the greenery or sustainability topic? We might want to ask that of the system. Perhaps the question could be, you know, what are the most common themes around greenery and sustainability? And as you can see, the system immediately starts generating a summary again that is very much grounded uh, on the inputs that residents provided. And this is all, the, this is a, very much along the lines of the design philosophy that we've taken to this interface, which gives you control of how exactly the summaries have been created. So then you can draw your own conclusions. Lastly, I want to show you um, the last bit, which has to do with slicing the data further. Uh, we saw how we can use tags to basically structure the data, but you might also be interested in using demographic information for it especially for something like a redesign of the park, you might be thinking, well, maybe young people versus old people have different thoughts, have different ideas, different needs, like how can I actually slice it? Well, it might be that I wanna see how 25 year olds think about this. What are some of the ideas that popped up? I can filter it and I can also ask the system to auto summarize it, but in this case, making sure that the age range is limited. So the summary is very much informed by who uh, but young people. All right, so we, again, I'm walking you a little bit through, through the journey of aggregation, input aggregation, now input uh, processing. But of course, ultimately, what you want to do is report back. Uh, I, I think that's that's the ultimate goal, both, both to us residents and towards your stakeholders. And one thing you've told us is it's tedious, it takes me too long, and eventually, sometimes I don't do it. The good news today is that you can pretty easily build a report. You can do it with our report, report builder. We have a bunch of different modules you can easily aggregate that would give you the demographic breakdown of participants. You can integrate and bring in the AI summarization that I just showed you. And you can even bring in individual ideas for users to navigate. 
how does this look like in the in the front office? What if I want to actually share back with residents? Well, you can, right? Like you've created that report. You better close the loop. Like that is really the way to keep them re-engaged. So as you can see, this is the last phase, the conclusive phase of that uh, redesign project. And here we are simply telling residents, here's what happened. Like this is what we heard from you. And we might have even like a section with like, here's the decision we've made. I talked about ideation, but I just want to make sure that also you all are aware that everything I've talked about is also possible today for surveys, which is a methodology that is very much used by our clients. Don't be afraid of using open-ended responses anymore. We do offer a summarization capability. You can also put together a report that very much you know, toggles between the quantitative data and the open-ended data. So, um, let me go back to the presentation. I hope this was this was helpful. I'm really looking forward for the feedback. As Witsa said, we definitely have designed this together with you all. Um, it's the first installment. There's much more coming. And, and definitely 2024 is the year of focus on inclusion and reporting. So excited for what's to come. Thank you, Irene. Um, so to everyone, don't hesitate to drop all your questions in the Q&A on uh, the tool, how it functions, uh, and so on. And then we're going to, I'm going to start sharing my screen again, first of all. And then secondly, we're going to head into um, a quick poll that we'd like to launch. Hopefully it's going to work now, um, which is going to be, what is the benefit that you're most excited about? Um, so the same options as we had before. Um, for this question now it's luckily showing up so four options increased efficiency automated reporting closing the loop with your residents and uncovering deeper insights so again we'll give it another 20 seconds and then we'll conclude all right the, the results look more mixed here than I mean, the previous one was very obvious. I'll give it another five. So if you haven't voted yet, now's the moment. Some people took a bit longer to think this through. All right, we're going to end the poll. So we do have a clear winner. 38% says, um, I'll also share the results with you all. 38% says increased efficiency is the most important thing. The other part uh, or the second uh, most voted is um, the automated reporting. Um, so getting quickly to report. And then thirdly, uncovering deeper insights. Um, last bit is 11% said closing loop with residents is most important for us. Thanks so much for, for sharing those insights with us all. And then we're going to talk with Marlena about um, how she has used the tool so far. Marlena, as I said before, uh, working at the city of Vienna. Um, has been one of the, the leaders in, in citizen participation at the city of Vienna. And she has worked really with us uh, developing this tool, providing early feedback and, and pioneering. So um, Marlena, I want to start by asking you a similar question to the one that we had in the first uh, poll. So, you know, the world before we had this, before we had the AI, how were you typically doing the reporting and the analysis of your community engagement projects? Could you walk us through the process? First. I wanted to take part of the poll, but it said, uh, you're not allowed, you're a host. So I'm, I'm really happy that I can say it now. Um, I would have taken the same, the, the Excel. Um, we have a statistics apartment kind of in the city, but um, we can kind of just count on them when we have like citywide projects. Um, normally with the district level projects that are normally on our platform, um, the product, product managers just do it themselves. Um, and for instance, and you can see it on the screen, the Vienna climate team, uh, we had it in last year, 2023, um, the second cycle. And as you can see, there were many, many ideas coming through. It's, um, we kind of active, actively engage the residents in the city's districts in three uh, last year. And all together in the three districts, we got 1,365 climate action ideas. I put it here because it's such a large number. Um, and 
that's of course a great result. That's always the uh, the big number we are hoping for with our uh, participation processes. But at the same time, it's like, oof, now the analyzing starts and um, you can, you, you sit before the big numbers and the ideas and it's such a time consuming task just to analyze and to really get all the ideas and what they are saying and what you want to get out of them. So that was always the part before we got the AI tool. And on top of that, and I think that's, I would say the same with all of the cities um, or all the administrations, um, we got, of course, or we face, of course, a resource sort shortage um, also in the districts, especially. So where really the participation processes are happening, really the participation is happening. Um, the districts have so much to do. And so sometimes participation comes last. We really want to participate, but it's sometimes not really the time or the the person they, the, there that knows how to, how to participate or how to analyze the data we got. So just the platform is uh, perfect for us to give like a user-friendly way to participate. Um, but the AI tool like is something we, we were really hoping for. Um, and uh, Yeah, so you were saying that previously was yeah. mainly, so the main challenge for you was that it's just time consuming. You were using spreadsheets, yeah. um, sifting through all the data one by one, I guess, like trying to understand um, what it's about, trying to find the common themes. Um, and it's, and always, it's always about the what are the key themes, what are the most wished for um, things. And to really get this out of the data is like the, the greatest goal. Mm. Um, and that's always like uh, really difficult. Yeah, well, yeah. That that's sounds pretty recognizable. And I think it's also what we, we try to, in in the initial poll, try to kind of summarize what we have seen. So either you do it, you do it in a very manual way, it takes a lot of time, which is the better option than option two, not doing it at all and losing all those insights. Because then, of course, you know, like all that community input and those insights get lost. Or you uh, outsource it to consultants, right, uh, which, which is typically another option. Um, but yeah, so what you just shared of, okay, uh, it takes a lot of time is, is, a, is a pretty common pain point, and I think everyone will be able to relate to it. So could you tell a little bit more, uh, Madeline, about how you used Citizen Lab's AI assistant and how it has changed the way that you do your input analysis? Mm -hmm. um, I, at the point the um, climate team was um, like ended, the AI tool wasn't there. Uh, so they um, analyzed it like the normal way, um, but I took their data and now I can kind of um, see the differences uh, or the um, similarities. Um, so I would say I got kind of the same or the similar re results uh, using the AI assist assisting um, an anal analysis. Ah. Um, I would really say it's or uh, the the impact is tangible, kind of the, uh, the AI model offers a good process to really see what the what the data wants to tell me, kind of, or really with the summary and, and then it's possible to really ask questions. It's just perfect to really uh, get in a few, just a few seconds, uh, a good over, overview of all the ideas. Um, and it's really an, a good and easy way to um, to start kind of the analyzing pro process. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, what's been your experience about the the quality of what came out? Up to was it like what you expected? Was it better? Was it worse? Not worse. <laughs> really not worse. Uh, I would say it's kind of really the same. Maybe it's I I. I did like the also for the green belt project. Maybe we can talk later about this. Um, yeah. I kind of had the same, or I wanted the same um, answers, of course. So I put in like the same questions they had in their analysis. So, but if you if you really think about the questions you you put into the system, you get really good um, output. Mm -hmm. And I yeah. really like the little comment bubbles behind the summarizing tool 
so that we really see, okay, the system is really right. And it's really talking about the, the comments um, that were put in. And it's not just doing anything that it's sometimes with chat GPT, you don't really know where it's coming from, but you really mm -hmm. see many comment bubbles behind it. And you really know, okay, they're talking about the biggest wish was trees. And you really see, okay, it was trees, 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 trees. I just know the, the German, Birke, 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 Lerche, 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 I don't know. And it really puts it together and you know, okay, it was really trees, kind of. Right. No, yeah. really. I'm, I'm glad you pointed out because I think that is that is that has been for us super important in how we design it, that it's that it's ethical design, that it's design that um follows like this concept of human in the loop process. You are the AI is there to assist you to make your work easier and 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 and, and faster. But you stay still in control, right? Like it's not the AI is taking over what you're doing, uh, which is which is critical given the importance of of, uh, of the community input. Um, you wanted to chat about a little more about the the Green Belt um, project. So can you share a bit more about that project and there again, like the the impact of of how this tool has helped you? Mm -hmm. That is a survey. I think our most current one, um, and it's kind of like just a little part of the district, so not that big, like as the uh, Vienna city, um, Vienna climate city team. Um, and it's like a survey um, to put together different green spaces and to really help, help um, animals, insects uh, to move around easier, but also to make it like a nicer area for um, people just to be there. And that's just a survey um, to ask people what they like, um, if they want to um, put together these green spaces, how they use the um, the space already, um, kind of this was like the, the idea. And I talked to the project manager and asked her how long she she, she took to analyze the, the survey. I think it was about 300 um, participants for the survey. But they also did, you can see it on the screen, for free kind of walk-ins. So people just coming through the streets and they were just talking to them. And I think it was also possible to um, send emails and just kind of phone them or talk to them. So it was different um, things coming together. Um, so she isn't really sure how long it really took, but she said to me it was like, one to two work weeks really to under to put together everything to understand everything to get like the key results the trends um what what who who was really participating so the demographics and to really get now a, a good um end product who is what's that's like readable and that is understood by the residents but also a good product for uh, the politicians so it was really it, it has to be now a, a well-rounded um, mm -hmm. end product so now it was really easy for me because she had the concept already that took her kind of two weeks and I uh, took now all the um the data and um, use the AI tool. And I was really surprised. It The summary was really here kind of the same, really with the, because it's, um, some are really like, yes, more greenery spaces for the insects, spaces for 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 people. And then uh, there are many people who are, who, are, who are also like, okay, but we still need space for cars and um, we want to really, drive still through here so it's, it's really um a space where the opinions are really different um mm -hmm. and this was also really perfectly said also through ai really this different opinions and really in well-rounded sentences yeah. sentences that could be really used I was, I was really really surprised so really um congratulations i would say in this project yes all right. Awesome example. Thanks for sharing. And I can totally see how it helps with like mining also for the arguments and the pros and the cons of different options, especially when you have a more controversial option uh, or project. Um, Marlene, you, you referred to the political level as well. So beyond the, the project reporting, how has the tools to help you 
reporting out, reporting out both to uh, the decision makers, but also to your community? Um, I would say it. you save time in like the analyzing. And, and so you kind of have time to communicate the things you take out of the data or things you learn from the data. And you have time to communicate with the decision makers, with the residents. You can think about maybe changing your process. You have, you have time on another end, kind of. And I think that's um, the best thing. I think we always are searching for more time for participation because everyone is always like, I don't have time for participation. We have to do right. the project. It has to be done then and then. Um, a big election is coming up. It's not no time. No, no, no. On, and now with it's not that's not like now we have all the time and now participation will happen in Vienna or in the world. Now it's everything is solved. But I think it's one step into the right direction to have or not to lose time somewhere where we have other solutions and then an NNI analysis tool kind of. Okay, yeah. that's, I think that's a great way to put it. I mean, the best way to save time, so to speak, is not doing participation, but then we're talking about also values and sort of the city you want to build the governance and, and, and the benefits of participation. But um, it, it makes total sense that, you know, when you do participation, that this helps you to save time to actually spend time with your community and on um, things that matter most. Um, we talked a little bit about transparency. We talked about that human in the loop uh, part. Um, how do you see the how do you see that for the future? Like the interaction between the human and the AI when it comes to reporting. What is the role of the AI? What is the role of the human? Um, I hope that the human will still be a big part of all the AI, but that's just me. I don't know what other um, opinions are. Um, for us in in the city of Vienna, in the administration, we have kind of a guideline. We call it compass, like how to how we could or should use AI. And I really like the the opinion or the go to kind of or the big set statement from the city to us. Um, use it, and it helps you and find your ways where you want to use it and where it saves you time so really be open but be open with kind of the still think about still read it still check it it's still just a technical system and it's still you who decides what you take out of it so really that's something I'm always thinking about so once again with the comments and the I think it you always say like it's just 70, 80% correct. Mm -hmm, exactly. Kind of like, please check it, kind of a little yeah. statement on top. I really like this, like, we're not 100% sure. And that that's something I always take with me with mm -hmm. AI, just to check yeah. it one more time. That's great. Yeah, I, I don't know if we found, pointed it out during the demo, but indeed the accuracy shows you actually, you know, like the larger the data set, the more difficult mm -hmm. it becomes to be very accurate. That's why we have that structuring all the data. And then you see like, like your accuracy score go up. Um, so great that you that you make use of that. Um, anything we didn't touch on yet, Madalena, that you still want to share about uh, the AI, about community engagement? Um, I was really, ha I'm really happy about the form sync. I saw it today, now the first time. Um, and for us in Vienna, that's a big part, like still going on the streets. Um, mm -hmm like giving everybody postcards to put their ideas on or to put postcards on our district newsletters or such, just at events uh, to really not, everybody has to be like totally savvy on digital platforms or how to put it, put it um, on the platform online. So we really want to be like on the streets, but for kind, for example, for the uh, climate team, that was really a uh, really difficult. There were so many postcards coming in, and they put everything like one by one onto the platform. That was really time consuming. So I saw it now the first time, and and I'm really looking forward um, to give the climate team like the goal to to use this. Yeah. 
form sync uh, on the next round. I think that's really a big win for us. Yeah. yeah. All right. Awesome. Well, thanks so much, Marlene, for, for being here, for sharing your experience. Really glad to hear how it has uh, helped you in, in Vienna. Um, and yeah, I just also want to share that we have held day with a couple of other uh, clients who might be here or not be here. So thanks so much for collaborating with us on this super exciting feature. If we think a little more about the future, we're excited about yeah, the, also the future potential that um, AI holds for community engagement. This is a first step and probably the most obvious step, reporting. There's a lot of, of time, obviously, to save as we have uh, discussed today, but also insights to gain. And for the future, what we're um, exploring at the moment is how AI can also help with participatory design, with the setup of projects, how to make that easier. As we see that community engagement, online community engagement also comes to an increased maturity uh, overall worldwide, I would say. Um, it's also important as we get more and more practitioners, more and more project managers on the platform, we want to really embed those best practices in the way that we design our projects. And we think that AI has a role to play there to give um, all sorts of pointers and hints and so on. So that is something we're excited about. We're also excited about, and it's more in the future, uh, in the longer run, to think about how AI could help us find consensus, find uh, also potentially uh, divide or polarization on, in topics and to help with the facilitation of dialogues uh, between residents. So those are topics that we are still exploring. Uh, if you have interest in exploring this with us, please let us know. Always happy to uh, go into a dialogue about this. Now, we do have, I see here that we do have a, a whole bunch of questions ready for us. So if you haven't submitted your question yet, uh, now uh, we are at the end of, of, of our presentations at least. So again, um, thank you, Madeline, and thank you, Irene, for sharing. And now it's time for uh, questions. So uh, let's have a look first. There was at... lots of discussion and some ideas, innovative ideas. I saw AI assistant for virtual meetings, like... Definitely, All right. this is our flowing. Cool. Um, well, let's start with the question on, on top uh, for you, Irene. Um, so would the form sync work with maps? And if the paper data was a map with ideas drawn or written onto it, so would the form sync work with maps? Um, if we submit it as an, I mean, at the end of the day, ideation and, and map ideation are very much closely related. Um, so the way it would work now very much like the form itself would be an input form. It's true that we haven't specifically covered a use case of like, you know, dropping an input in the map on paper. Uh, so it's something that we would need to look into and see, you know, whether there's a strong use case for that, uh, you know, to do something like that in person on paper. Uh, but at the moment, it's true that the tool is optimized for, uh, you know, more of a traditional right. textual input. Perfect. I'll, I'll just rapid fire a couple of questions that you have, that's fine. So um, we have Steve from Luxembourg here asking if um, the report comes in PDF format in the faces when we um, bring back to the community, or is it coming directly from the platform? Yeah, it comes right directly from the platform. It's optimized for mobile. Uh, so no, it's not in that case a PDF, but we do have uh, the functionality to be able to generate a PDF of the report in case you, for example, wanted to share it via email with some stakeholder. But in the case of residents, um, it's not generated as a PDF. All right, thank you. Um, let me see here. There was a question on is, um, is this topic categorization AI? So that one is clearly answered. So I think we can go to the next one. Um, I see here another question. Can the AI assistant make decisions or only provide recommendations? Good question. Uh, no, it's not making for now decisions on your behalf, and and you know we are we we have been very intentional about how we've designed for now the interface, and of course this is first iteration, first installment. Uh, there will be much more to come, but we do see it as as a service or an assistant to you. Uh, you are the practitioner. You are the expert. Uh, mm -hmm. So ultimately, anything we build, no matter what 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 space in the domain of our product it fits into, uh, will bring along the same philosophy. Like we do want to bring you insights. We do want to hopefully automate that sense making further. Um, but we also want to make sure that you understand where it comes from and that you are the ultimate decision maker around how it's reported back. Got it. All right. Um, this is an interesting one. 
So a uh, question from Lisa. So the difficulty that Lisa faces with the AI summaries is accurately differentiating between um, the statement, I want a dog park, and the mm -hmm. statement, there are too many dogs in the park, for instance. Yeah. So uh, can we expand a little bit on the human um, quality control on the human sentiment review and how advanced the technology is to differentiate on this? Yeah, um, good question. Great question. I think the the current models are evolving really fast. So they are at a point where they could make that difference. I think if we look at what we demoed today, probably um, it's fair to say that the auto tagging would probably group those two statements together, Lisa, than the ones you've shared. But it's true that if we used, for example, the querying functionality, the ask questions functionality, and we, we said something like, what are people's concerns with respect to dogs in the park? It would be able to make that nuance. And it would actually point to the two different inputs you alluded to. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a good one. And I do want to add that, um, because something for me, for me that has been clear to, to also explain is that we the AI looks at the semantics of words. It's not just a kind of word. It's not just looking at dog and dog, because you can use it in different sentences. So it does look at the context and uh, the syntaxes of, of the sentence to understand what it's actually about. Um, all right, next one. Um, yeah, it would be great to have the AI summaries integrated into the report builder that is um, coming very soon, right, Irene? Yep, very much on it. Developers are working on it as we speak. So that should be mm -hmm. a bit soon. And then we have um, a question regarding uh, data protection. Is there a guarantee that the data is not going to be used by the AI outside of the Citizen platform? Yeah, uh, great question. So the language models, the SAP processors that we are currently using only receive textual data, right? So the so from the example that we saw would be the idea title the idea description. So whatever the resident wrote in their contribution, we are not sending to those models anything that have, you know, any personally identifiable information like email or username or demographic information or picture. Um, and maybe also something good to, to be aware of, like we uh, have a contract with those sub processors, right? And contractually, they guarantee that they are not going to be using that data for any other purpose than actually providing a service to us. It's not going to be used to train to train any model. It is just used for our purposes. All right. And um, I had another one. Oh, yeah, this is also a good one from Stephanie. Um, if we were taking notes at a council meeting, for example, could those notes be imported or does it need to come in a survey format? So does it need to come in a specific format or can it be uh, more um, open text fields? Yeah, uh, great question. And this is something that we've heard from a, from a few councils, like the need to import just data, right? Like you might sometimes I might not consider it. It's a survey format, it's an idea format, maybe it's just a comment. The, at the moment, um, the best we could do is like import something that follows like the format of a survey in a spreadsheet format, for example, we could do something like that. Um, but it's it's true that, you know, simply like open data at the moment, we couldn't incorporate. Um, but it's true that it's it's definitely part of the discussions for the roadmap for this year, something that, you know, we are considering as, as more councils bring it up. All right. Wonderful. Um, thanks so much, Irene, for answering all these questions. We've got a couple more, but I think we've, we've been through um, most of them. And if there's any remaining questions, we'll make sure to get them answered after the webinar. So that's it for us for today. Um, thank you very much. Thank you all for, for being here. We're really excited to show this and share this with you. And uh, don't hesitate, of course, to get in touch with us if you would like to know more about it, if you would like to feed in action, if you'd like to feed, um, apply to your projects, uh, make sure to get in touch. Thanks so much. And wherever you are around the world, have a great day.